So today we're going to ask the question, ultimately, is our struggle in life against other people or is it something else? And the scripture we're going to look at is Ephesians 6.12 and it says in Ephesians 6.12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And I think a lot of people scoff at the idea of there being an actual devil, being demons, being a spiritual realm. A lot of people scoff at this idea. And I remember mocking someone talking about this when I was an atheist and saying, you're just trying to make an excuse for the things you do wrong. And I think there is some legitimacy to that. We can make excuses for ourselves and say, oh, you know, the devil made me do it. But the truth is, we actually do have choices. And it's my belief that the, the spirit realm, the dark spirit realm is very real and the spirit realm is is a um, is a reality that is much more tangible and real than this one and when these this physical body wears out we are spirits in eternity forever and so there is influences that we can pick up because our spirit in us can pick up those influences um, whether it's a heavenly influence, angelic or demonic influence, we can pick that up. We can pick it up in, with our thoughts. We can pick it up with our emotions. I've experienced this personally, the spirit realm, both on the side of heavenly encounters and on the side of demonic and evil encounters. And, and they are very real. So this scripture is actually explaining how we aren't wrestling against flesh and blood. It's so easy for us to look at someone and say, it's your fault and you're the one that I'm angry with and you're the one that needs, that I'm, you know, you're the one that is my enemy. But the Bible is really clear. Our enemy is not the people around us. Our enemy is our true spiritual enemy that is trying to, it says three things that the enemy tries to do, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And so if there is that agenda, then what do we do with, with that reality? We recognize, first of all, that when we attack each other, we are part of the enemy's agenda to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So we shouldn't be focused on attacking the people around us. We should be focused on how do we defeat evil. And the Bible says that we overcome evil with good. We overcome hatred with love. We overcome violence with peace. And so we have to let God tell us what good is. We can't make it up for ourselves because we can turn twist anything into being good and it turned out to be something really in line with the agenda of the enemy. Our, our wrestling is never against the people in front of us. It's against the enemy who wants to destroy both you and the person that you have set as your enemy. And so all of this is something we can be aware of and we can stop calling people our enemy and we can start calling the enemy, the spiritual enemy, who he really is, and acknowledge him. And this will put you in a position to love and to overcome evil with good. I had, um, when my son was young, he struggled a lot with having night terrors and having spiritual attacks. And I had to learn how to respond to those attacks. And I had to discern whether he was just having a natural, normal fit of a, of a baby, of a child, who needs to learn that the world doesn't revolve around him sometimes, and it's regular discipline where he's, you know, sits by himself in his room for a while or whatever it is, or whether or not he's being attacked spiritually and he needs me to intervene in a spiritual way. 
and many times it was spiritual. It was very clear that it was spiritual. And I would ask the Lord to show me, what is this attack? And he would. The Lord would show me, your son feels accused right now. He feels ashamed. So I would come in and I would speak life over those lies. I would say, you are a good son. You are brave and strong. You are kind. And you are not unkind. You are not you are not a bad son. And I would say that on purpose. And when I would, he would it would break. This attack would break, and he would come and hug me and say, I'm sorry. And it was the same with whatever else. If the Lord said, he is feeling, um, he is feeling self-hatred and self-loathing, then I would come in and say, Joshua, I love you so much, and you are so loved, and you are our gift from God. And I would speak life over that lie, and it would break, and he would come and hug me, and the fit would be over. My son would try to hurt himself. He would physically try to hurt himself, and so I would go, and I would wrap my arms around him and kiss his face and say, and just show him that his body is worth loving and being kind to. And as I would do that, he would melt. And sometimes the Lord would say, this is rebellion. He needs you to discipline him. And I would discipline him in a way that made him able to come into obedience. And that's what it took sometimes. And so there is... There's all different kinds of attacks. Rebellion is bad, is so hard on their heart because the enemy just sits and accuses your kids and wants to continue to bother them. And so when I recognized there were certain things that were a spiritual attack, I would come with the opposite of whatever it was going on. If he was raging in anger, I came with a gentle voice. I came with soft answers. And I would always sing. Sing. I would sing, I would hold him, rock him, especially if he was trying to hurt himself, and I would sing worship songs over him. And it would bring peace every time. And I would continue to just speak truth and, and speak gently. The Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. So there's all kinds of things that I could tell you about those, those times when would battle with night terrors or with terrible fits that were actually spiritual attacks. Um, but for now, just to say that I know that this is real and I know that it's something we can overcome. We can overcome evil with good. We can overcome darkness with light. We can overcome lies with truth. And God's ways are a universe above our ways. And when we go in those, in those ways and we recognize we aren't wrestling against flesh and blood, we're wrestling against a spirit, a spirit realm that comes to kill and to steal and to destroy. And if we can respond the right way, then we can overcome and not only overcome to get through it, but then we become stronger in our character and we teach our kids to be stronger. And it's, it's just such a powerful thing and a beautiful thing. So let's pray for that. So Father, I thank you, God, for your scriptures that gives us secrets into the spirit realm that we can't see with our eyes but we can sense with our hearts and with our spirits we can sense that there's a battle going on and i thank you lord for the freedom to know that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but we wrestle against a spiritual realm that you have already had victory over. And if we respond well, Lord God, and if we respond with your scriptures, if we respond with your ways, we can overcome evil with good. We can overcome darkness with light. We can overcome lies with truth. So I pray you would just fill us with your light, fill us with your truth, fill us with your Holy Spirit, that you would be in charge of what goes on in our spirits. You would be in charge of what goes on in our minds. Give us the mind of Christ so that we can respond to spiritual attacks the way you would, God, with love, with light, with truth. I praise you, God, for everything you've done to give us everything we need to overcome. And I pray that when we've done everything that we know to do, we would continue to stand firm and we would trust your word and you would deliver us completely.
completely deliver us into the light of your love, out of darkness into light. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for your safety. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your ways. Help us to love the people around us and not get our eyes distracted by what's in front of us, but to keep our, our perspective an eternal one and a spiritual one so that we cannot make enemies of the people that aren't our real enemy, but we would love like you do and we would live like you call us to. In Jesus' name, amen.